cell discussed in, in, in the normal pressure hydrocapnus and effect of frontal lobe on gait. So what to cover in the history, the history of fall going downstairs and to going upstairs, which will subsequently state the function of quadriceps and hip extensors, joint pain and swelling, diurnal variation, we all know about the dopa responsive dystonia, tripping or stumbling of, of feet, neurogenic claudication. So the tripping and stumbling, I repeat, can be due to anything. It can be due to element problem, can be due to UMN problem, and can be due to dystonia as such. In the neurological examination, we have to assess the cognitive function, the examination of motor sensory and cerebellar system, and the examination of gait. Now, gait examination is not simply asking a patient to move about or to walk. It's not like that. It's a systemic examination which starts, starts from sitting up from the chair. We all know about the rocket sign which have happens in the PHP in which the patient due to motor impulsivity suddenly gets up and falls backwards. The next step is to check about the stance, the initiation of the gait, the width of the base, the stride length, the foot clearance, the turn negotiation and cadence. Now there are a few delicate tests we, we, which we have to cover like tandem walking test, Fukuda, Rombach test, etc. Now how we define what is cadence? It is the number of steps per unit time, which can be fast, can be slow, can be regular, can be regular. We have to measure the step length, which is the distance between the successive heel strikes. Vertical clearance of the foot is very important, which is very low in the Parkinson patients and high in the peripheral neuropathy patients. Width of the base is, in most gait disorders, it, it is wide to maintain the balance, except a very few. For example, the spastic gait where there is scissoring of the gait. Now, going back to our patients, what we find in the examination, there is orthostatic hypotension, which, which is the feature of autonomic involvement. The cognitive function is normal. There is gauge, gauge evoked nystagmus and intention tremor suggestive of cerebellar involvement. There is symmetric Parkinsonism, positive pyramidal signs, and hypokinetic gait with positive pull test. Now, to differentiate between the most commonly five higher and middle tier disorders in the high, high level, there is the frontal level, there will be hesitant gait, short step length, short height, lower cadence, wide base, magnetic gait. In the spastic, spastic gait, I mentioned about circumduction and scissoring. We all know about the shuffling gait of the Parkinsonism, short step length, short step, step height, low cadence, decreased arm swing, destination, freezing, turn in, in block. In the cerebellar, everything is variable and the cadence is also irregular. The base is usually white. In the sensory ataxia, the step length is short, but the step height is more to create a slap on the foot to get some proprioceptive and auditory input to maintain the gait. So it is known as thumping gait. And the problem is more in the night of, of course, as we are not getting the visual cue. In the lowest level of gait, there is, is the waddling gait where there is knee hyperextension during stance and lordotic posture. And we know the opposite buttock sag, sags down while we leave the limb of interest. In the psychogenic gait, there is a bizarre in, inconsistent, inconsistent. You, you cannot fit it into any pattern. Now, if we look into our patient, the gait problem is not one fold. It is extra pyramidal, it is pyramidal, it is cerebellar, and there is postural business due, due, due to autonomic involvement. So as we mentioned in the first slide, in this patient, there is problem in stepping, problem in anti-gravitary support, problem in maintenance of equilibrium, and problem in propulsion. So this is the patient. It, it apparently looks normal, but if we look very carefully, there is bilateral putaminal slit slit sign. This is very, very classical of multi-system atrophy, particularly Parkinson type. But to again, to finish with, don't stamp all gait problems as neurological problem. 
there can be mental health problem there can be age related frail frailty there can be disturbance in the vision there can be cut cut cardiological prob problems like recurrent syncope there can be environmental factors low light and etc and all what i discussed today is about the chronic involvement of the gait and rhythm but the most commonly we get in our opd in this age group of acute problem which is due to stroke so never miss a diagnosis of stroke Di diagnose it early go for throm thrombolysis and thrombectomy so will you call this man a crippled man no by any way it's fine even if you drag stumble and sway but lead a blessed life like him thank you